A meme recently circulated on social media that claimed 52% of young adults live with their parents. If this is the first time you're hearing about it, you are probably jumping to one of two conclusions. You're either thinking, ah, the cupcake trophy generation clearly cannot hack it without mommy and daddy, and if they would just stop getting degrees in underwater basket weaving and YOLOing it up in Europe, they could hurry up and be miserable like the rest of us. Or you're thinking, wow, the system is broken to the point that the most educated, most in-debt generation of all time can't make ends meet, things are screwed beyond repair, and we need to blow the whole thing up and just start over. Or maybe you had a third reaction, incredulity. Could this really be true? These numbers seem way too high. Some responses to the meme pointed out that the numbers could be skewed for several reasons, including people whose parents live with them, as in the child is a caretaker. Others noted that young adults includes college students who would be smart to live at home rather than paying an outrageous amount to live on campus. And still others went back a step and asked, why have we decided this is a bad thing? Shipping out of the nest at age 18 or else you're a failure, not a global expectation, right? Multi-generational living is normal and culturally prevalent outside the US. But before we start spiraling, let's ask ourselves an important question. Is this claim even legitimate? So where does the data come from? The first stop on our investigative journey today is to check the Pew Research Center since they have the historical context. In research titled, Share of Young Adults Living with Parents Rises to Levels Not Seen Since the Great Depression Era, and we'll link it in the description, we can examine 120 years of data about the living situations of 18 to 29 year olds in the US. Between 1900 and 1930, the number of young adults living at home hovers in the low 40% range and spikes at 48% in 1940 during World War II. A steep drop-off follows, hitting a low point of 29% in the 1960s and staying relatively low until climbing again in the 1990s, breaching 40% in the 2010s for the first time since World War II and remaining high through today, reaching a new peak of 52% in July 2020. Moreover, we now have a more more substantive, specific definition of young adult, someone aged 18 to 29 years old. And the 52% peak of adult children living at home was during, well, you know. Oh, right, that. Per Pew, among all adults who moved due to the pandemic, 23% said the most important reason was because their college campus had closed. And 18% said it was due to job loss or other financial reasons. Because all young adults are not created equal, right? Here's the kicker. Most of the growth was generated by the youngest of young adults. 2.1 million of the 2.6 million increase in 18 to 29 year olds was driven by 18 to 24 year olds, the same cohort that's more likely to be found still in school. When you segment the 18 to 29 year old group into 18 to 24 year olds and 25 to 29 year olds, the picture looks completely different. The growth for the older crew increased from 26% in February, 2020 to 28% in July, 2020, which is a far cry from the 52% of young adults blanket claim. Age differentiation feels important since the outraged crowd in the meme comments seem to picture Brennan and Dale building adult bunk beds when they're claiming that young adults have no desire to be independent anymore. How are you doing over there? Really good. Regardless, things seem to be normalizing, but what if normal might still be bad? A USA Today fact check from late 2021 noted that the number had begun dropping again back down to around 47%, which is more in line with pre-pandemic numbers. But 47% is still historically pretty high. And what's been most interesting is the way the media has run with this story, that half of Americans aged 18 to 29 live with their parents, assigning a more damning narrative. Several of the articles, like this one from Yahoo Finance and this one from Fortune, even claim that young adults are living at home so they can buy Chanel bags and flex on their friends. Though the relationship between the two data points is tenuous at best. The logic posited is, 
Well, young people are living at home at record rates and luxury goods sales are rising among young people. Ergo, young people are living at home because slash so they can buy luxury goods, which is weird considering later in the same Yahoo Finance article, it states that 51% of young adults say they are living at home so they can save money. And 39% of them say it's because they can't afford rent. Young adults living at home because they literally can't afford not to is an interesting barometer of how dire our economic situation is. In a culture where living with your parents as an adult is not the norm, it stands to reason this is not the default first choice for people in their 20s. So no, kids these days don't prefer being gig workers without health insurance who live with their parents. Even though we have a tendency to attribute these circumstances to personal preference. Uh, young people these days are just so different than young people of the past. They don't want to be independent. They don't want to work. They don't want to have a house of their own. But the data shows it's not really individual behavior or changes in generational preferences or slippery cultural phenomena that are responsible for these massive demographic wide shifts. Instead, it's probably just the result of a much more boring, much sadder story, a worsening economic reality. And if we want things to improve, blaming luxury handbags and adult bunk beds probably is not the solution. Rather, we can examine the types of policy decisions in decades past that were associated with lower rates of adult children living at home with their parents for answers. One thing's for sure, 47% of young adults aged 18 to 29 may live with their parents today, but... Trust me, it's complicated. And if you want to hear the full episode of this week's Money with Katie show, click the video that just popped up on the screen or in the description of this video. Our show is a production of Morning Brew and is produced by Henna Velez and me, Katie Gaddy Tossan. Devin Emery is our chief content officer, and our video editors are Christy Muldoon, Sebastian Vega, and Nicole Friedman. Additional fact checking comes from Kate Brandt.